it's Cody. Hi, it's Doug and Nyla. Hi, we wanted to talk to you guys today about what it's like being a caregiver for someone living with chronic illness and going through ostomy surgery. So I'm gonna ask Doug a few questions and let's see what he has to say. What would you tell people and their loved ones getting ready to undergo ostomy surgery? I would tell both the patient and the loved ones to be willing to ask for help. You know, it always makes things easier to ask each other for help, to ask the nurses and the doctors, always ask for help. So in the beginning, I was very timid about asking Doug for help with bag changes, but there were some times where I wasn't feeling well or things weren't going well. And finally, when I did ask Doug for help, it was a lot easier to deal with those moments when things aren't going well with a bag change. It actually strengthened our relationship, I would say. And what would you say? Four hands are better than two. Four hands are better than two. So describe a scary moment with an ostomy and how you dealt with it. The scariest moment I remember when you had your ostomy was I was on the subway platform and the phone rang, it was you, and you said we have to go to the emergency room immediately because my intestines are hanging out of my body. So I rushed to the hospital and you were, had already beaten me there and when I got there and saw what you were talking about, I was pretty shocked because it was like, what's it called, a prolapse? Prolapse. You were prolapsing yeah. like a lot. A badly. A lot. And it was, like it this was much. Uh, very interesting to see. But, you know, I tried to stay calm and just support you and everything was going to be okay. We were in the hospital. It was going to work out. And it all worked out, but it was a scary moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say that I think a lot of times doctors and nurses don't tell you all the things that could happen with an ostomy, probably because they don't want to scare patients when they first have surgery. So if a prolapse happens, it's very shocking to see for both your loved one and yourself. But Doug staying calm and just you know, being an advocate for me, making sure that people were paying attention to us and also keeping me calm as what I didn't know what was going on was really, really important. Okay, what is your number one tip for when your loved one is in the hospital for an extended period? I think the most important thing for me, since you were in the hospital a bunch of times, and I learned this over time, was to, you know, be there for you, but also take care of myself, to eat properly, and make sure I rest. Now I spent some nights in the hospital, but not to spend every single night. Obviously, if there's other loved ones available to spend time with the patient, that's very helpful. But even if not, it's important. It's, it's very important to stay rested. Otherwise, you can't really be supportive in the best way you can. It's important as a caregiver to take care of yourself and to reach out and, and ask for help from others too, because it's very challenging to have a loved one in the hospital for an extended period. And I know that being the person in the hospital, knowing that Doug was taking care of himself really gave me peace of mind. So that's it. Thanks Bye. guys, bye.